Kalunde, which is number three. Then we say Kalunde Huliya. Kalunde Huliya. So it's ka 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 lu lu de hu hu yeah hu like hu hu okay ka lu de hu li ya so the first word so when I first heard us over there I thought you were saying gu. But it's it's yeah. Gu. Yeah. Gu for so me. Gu is, is me. Or is it Ga? 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 Yeah. So you're asking yeah. them what their oh. name is. Oh. This one before I, I was asking you to count okay. your name. Yeah. Ga. Yeah. So Gu is me and Ga is you. Okay. Yeah. Gu is me. Yeah. What's your name? Yeah. Yeah. So Ga Lunde Huliya is what is your name? Or if you or if you uh, translate it wrong correctly, it would say, uh, "What is the name of you know? What is your name called?" Instead of you know, mm -hmm. ka, ka, you know, like ka is like a verb. No, no, <laughs> no, like um, how uh, in English we say, "What is your name?" Oh. But in Hmong we would actually say, "What is your name called?" Instead of name. yeah. Oh, what is yeah, your name see, called? Yeah. Uh, the last sound though of this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, I know that's yeah. a hard one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like yeah. G, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's the closest one. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Some people so go between the J and the the G. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, that is that's another sound that uh, we don't have in English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Somebody once said that if you put a pencil, you bite into a pencil, you can speak Hmong better. <laughs> If you say my name is, then you just say Columbe Hu Lia. My name is Lia. But if if you say Ka, if you say Columbe Hu Lia, that means you say what is your name. So you're asking somebody what is your name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah, it's another really hard word because that's something that we don't have in the English style. So it's yeah. Yeah, but it's close enough, then they'll get it. Okay, I know. Just, just oh imagine God, yeah. when all the Hmong, you know, like when we came to this country, I mean, we had to, we couldn't even learn, a, you know, like a phrase like this, like just start learning A, B, C, you know, and I remember like they kept taking me to the doctor because they thought I couldn't hear, you know, because I was not taking and when I came, I was the only Hmong student in the whole school. And the little white community in Kankakee, Illinois, there were no mm -hmm. other Hmong family there. And our family was sponsored by a church. Uh, my parents were older. I was the only child. And I went to school and I would cry three or four times before the day is over because I couldn't, you know, all I saw uh, people with blonde hair, blue eyes, and all I heard was blah, 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 <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so, but a lot of, you know, just a lot of your Hmong students, this is what they have to go through, you know? And, and, and uh, the teachers don't even speak Hmong, you know? So everything, and you just have to kind of observe and then learn and pick up, so. Mm -hmm. it, so, okay, so number three is Kalunde Huliya, that means, what is your name? And then number four, it becomes Gu, so Gu is what? Gu is me. Me. Yeah. Gu is me. Ga is you. Okay. So number four it says Gu Lun De Yang. So like when I said earlier, when I said Gu Lun De Hu Wa, I could say my name is Ka Blia, or you could say Gu Lun De Yang. My name is. So on this one they say Gu Lun De Yang. Lu, 
Because the question says, Golunde Fun Ya, then I would say Golunde Fu Wa, because the Fu goes together. Um, but this one, uh, she used a different phrase, and which is okay too. So you can use Golunde Ya, or you can say Golunde Fu Wa. So then um, number five, uh, the first is, is the same thing as number four. They say, this was made more for you so that you can practice with a partner, which hopefully we will have time to do that. Okay. So like I said, number five is the same as number four. It's the avoid part. And then um, number six, she says, uh, she says, gu ya zhong, gu ya zhong. But there should be a question that goes with that. So if you want to write um, this one, you can, if you want to add this to it, That means, how are you doing? Okay. How are you doing? Ka Bua Yang If you want to draw like, yeah, if you just want to draw another little thing and write that or just write that on top, then then how are you doing? How did you say the second part? Bua 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 Yeah so it's kind of like, you know how when you say your P, you say, well, you can blow a flame, you know. But how we say this, well, it's like we don't, we don't, like out of breath, we just say. It's like well. a PB combined. Yeah. PB. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so a, say without making. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> 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 And then number six, so after you ask somebody, how are you? The number six is when you answer and you say, yeah, that what we got it, right? Yeah, good, yeah, yeah, good, that means that I am doing well, or I am good, I am fine, okay? Okay, And then after you say that, typically you will turn to the person and you will say, that means, and you, and like me and me, why got me? If I go too fast, just let me know, okay? 
<laughs> I'm just like, okay, we need to get all of this in, and you guys have to be proficient, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need to get in. <laughs> <laughs> so when you go to the Thailand, you can just say, "Nha chong, kung nha say hu, kung nha chong, kung nha chong, kung chong xiao dan qi ka, bye, dan xi." Xin chào. Yeah, so it's funny. Okay, so after you you ask somebody and you say, "Con ne." Then we move to number seven. And so number seven, he will say, Gu nyo jong pia. Gu nyo jong pia. Gu nyo jong pia. And that means, I am doing well too. Pia? Tia? Like T I A. Tia? Okay. Yeah. Probably figured out that a lot of the consonants to answer is tone markers, right? Yeah. That, that, yeah. Yeah. Because you don't actually pronounce them. You don't actually pronounce them. Uh -huh. I never thought of it that way. Like, what but that's what they are, right? Uh -huh. Like, Zhang. Yeah. No. Yeah. Zhang. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So every time when you see a Hmong word that's writing with the G yeah. at the end, yeah. will be, yeah, you don't sound out. You, you would sound you would That'd be the tone. Out. Yeah. Uh, so the S, the M, the J, the B, the B, the D, and the G, those are all the tonal markers. So every time when you see this, this says, yeah, oh, jump, yong, ma. So these are all say the oh, oh. Oh, oh, so. Mm -hmm. And then so for is grandma and ta is with ya is right more is okay? Yeah. So these are the tone markers. So this almost says ah, 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 ah. Okay. So when you see the G the sound says ah. Okay. And then when you see like the um J marker. It says, ah, oh, ah, oh. you say, ah, oh, ah, oh. ah. Oh. And then you will see, ah, oh, ah, oh. kind of like that. But one thing just to point out, if you see Hmong names, they usually don't write them in RPA. So the names that you see written of Hmong people are not usually, this is Hmong R, RPA. When people were in Laos, they didn't know Hmong RPA mostly. Right. They learned it mostly in the US. Yeah. And so, they, so when they write their names, it's usually based on the Lao system, mm -hmm. actually, the pronunciation. Mm -hmm. So it's not, this is different. This is like, this is what missionaries uh, learned, yeah. created a, a way to write Hmong with the proper tones, right. proper, you know, so they create a system. For the purpose of that Hmong Christians could learn how to read the Bible, yeah. mm -hmm. and also sing uh, Christian songs. You, you even meet a lot of really old, older people in, uh, Hmong people in the U.S. often can't write RPA. They might write in Lao or something like that. Yeah, even today, there's a very yeah. small percentage of our Hmong population that knows how to read and write in Hmong. And so that's one thing that we struggle as a school district. Our district wants everything sent home to be translated, which takes about four hours to translate one piece of paper, but then maybe 1% might read it. Mm -hmm. Versus if we could use a resource towards making phone calls and making verbal connections and home visits, yeah. we can you know, we can actually get our message across more than spending after four hours translating a piece of material that is more confusing to a phone person trying to read it, you know, so, um, and so we, we are very, we're very different, and we, uh, you know, we, so to say that the same thing works with the phone people as it does with other people, it doesn't, because we came from a literate culture, you know, like my parents never gone to school. When I got here, I have to start learning ABCs, you know, and so it's, it's very different. And I think oftentimes, 
people look at Mo people as, oh, you know, they're just like the rest of the immigrants. And I say, no, we're not immigrants. We're refugees. There's a difference for you. You know, we came because we're persecuted and we didn't have a choice. And we came from the jungle of Laos. As I had no shoes and I was, I was 15. You know, we had no electricity. We had no, you know, we had to go to the river to get our water, you know. And so um, there's just, it's the journey of the Hmong people. Like it's just, it's very, when you really think about it, it's also a very amazing to see where we came from and where we're able to be at today. But at the same time, there's still so much work to, to be done and to be, to learn about who we are too. So, but yeah, we, we are everything. <laughs> so, but yet we maintain who we are. So. Yeah. Well, I would just add, when you think about your curriculum projects that you're going to work on, there are some really basic principles that your students and your fellow educators should understand. Like they should be able to explain the difference between an immigrant and a refugee. Yeah. And you would think that our educational leaders would understand that and they yeah. often are very confused. Yeah. So yeah. some of those really basic principles you'll want to capture in your curriculum projects. It's so important because a lot of times we have educators and board members who would say, well, my parents immigrated here and look at where we are today. You know, why can't the Hmong people be the same, you know? Mm -hmm. and it's, it's, a, it's a very different, you know. But, are, but I would point out one thing. I mean, people were refugees, but they may not want to be called refugees after being here a long sure. time. So yeah, you might want to refer to people as perpetual refugees. Yeah, right. right? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. That's, people can be offended by that. It is. It's good for educators to understand. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to call somebody a refugee, but if you understand yeah. their struggle, you know, and why they're struggling, then that's good. You know, because I think sometimes by not using that word, we forget. So we think like, oh, all the Hmong people are just like the model minority. Mm -hmm. They should do well, you know. But when you really, really desegregate and you get down to it, the Hmong people are stuck the lowest when it comes to education. You know, even though we kind of have doctors and lawyers and judges now, but still the majority of our Hmong people are still struggling. And I think as educators, just something that we can keep in mind. Like, definitely, I would not want to go to a Hmong kid and say, "You are a refugee." Yeah. You know, yeah, right, I would definitely right, right. understand. Right. You know, just like I need to understand mm -hmm. for myself, so how I can help that student you know, get to where they need to be, you know, and so those are just some, some of the thoughts, so, okay. Okay, so uh, number seven, so he said, <laughs> that means that I am fine too, or I am doing well too, okay. And then he said, okay, so he's still on, on seven, there's two lines there, he said, that's the first line, and then the second line, he said, Zhong Xie Tao Ji Ge. Zhong Xie Tao Ji Ge. And then it says that I am happy, well, happy to meet you. Oh, maybe there's one more for us for you. Is there one more of these ones here? Did you get one? Oh, I'll, I'll give her one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Could you say that again? Yeah, please. Zhong Xie, Zhong Xie Tao Ji Ge. G -ka. G -ka. G -ka. Okay. okay. So, Ka is the 